Hello subscribers and non-subscribers, welcome to Isle to Sturmovic 1946. Um, first things first, I want to note that I am going to be flying out as the Royal Navy because that is what the uh, one person who voted on the Google Plus poll that I did uh, selected and that is what we will be flying in this case. I want to note that that's not my specialty per se because we'll be taking off and landing on carriers which is not something I'm good at by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but nonetheless, that's what we shall be doing. Uh, now some of you guys might be wondering why I'm flying out the Royal Navy and not the Season 2 or whatever that I referred to it as um, for the United States Army Air Force. The reason for this is that the uh, I, I was having one recording issues at one point for the United States Army Air Force uh, playthrough, so that didn't work out. Uh, but also, the mission we were given, and it wasn't so much an issue with the mission, it was more of an issue with the time of day of the mission. Yeah, that was not going to really work out for me in this case. So, I don't mind going and essentially revisiting that campaign at some point in the future. Uh, but I decided that I'm just going to go ahead and move on. Uh, so in this case, like I said, we'll be flying out as Royal Navy, we'll be flying out as Bruce Griffindale Griffin, and I just decided his call sign is going to be Griffindale because his last name's Griffin, because why the hell not? But let's go ahead and start our mission. So Royal Navy, Flight Petty Officer, Fleet Ar Air Arm Pilot in the Pacific. And of course, actually, check the difficulty. Uh, let's see, we shall... Let's see. Complex engine management and separate engine start can be turned off. Uh, separate engine start, though, in this case means absolutely nothing because we don't actually have um, a. We don't have separate engines for the plane we'll be flying out. Uh, I'll turn on limited fuel, actually, uh, because honestly, the missions we've flown so far have not really. I would think require me to go and be like, oh crap, we don't have enough fuel to make it back to base. I can't quite say I've can uh, I don't I can't really say that that's been the situation so far. So we'll turn on limited fuel and we'll see how this works out. It probably won't end well, but we'll see. Uh, no players on view. I want to be able to go into third person. Uh, I would like to have my speed bar. Thank you. I'm not sure what the padlocks are, so I'm going to go ahead and just allow ground padlocks. Um, okay, that's fine. Uh, I would like to have that, and I would like to have the minimap path. This menu will pretty much always stay as is, I want to note. Oh, but no HUD icons. That I can turn off. Because I think those are the... Um, It'll tell you like who your friends and enemies are, what plane exactly that they're flying, and what number they are, and things like that. So I'll turn off HUD icons. Uh, vulnerability, realistic pilot vulnerability, no instant success, takeoffs and landings, realistic landings, turn off realistic navigation because I'm not quite sure exactly what that entails. Uh, we'll allow those, but I'm actually going to go and turn off stalls and spins for now. Uh, torque and gyro effects. Let's see. So, torque and gyro effects will affect me, especially when I go and increase... I believe it. those mostly affect you when you increase torque. So when I increase my throttle and things like that, this will cause the plane to jitter a bit. Which may or may not be bad for me, uh, especially since I tend to adjust my, well, yeah, I tend to stay at a certain speed until I get on somebody. Once I get on somebody, I may have to adjust my speed to stay with them so I don't go and fly straight into them or start falling behind. Uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll leave basically all of that on as is. Some of these things I'll actually probably never uh, turn on, like uh, separate engine start. I doubt I'll ever turn that on. 
Uh, let's see, any of these other ones that I may never turn on. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, this menu will pretty much be staying as is, though. So, whatever these settings are at now is basically what they will be at for pretty much the entirety of flying Isle to Sturmovik. But I think that's going to be good enough, although I think I may have, have wanted to actually, should have probably... I'm sure I will come to regret leaving some of these things turned on, such as flutter effects and torque and gyro effects, but we shall try to learn to live with it at least. So let's go ahead and fly out. So we'll be flying in Okinawa 1945 in the number 820th squadron of the FAA um, fleet air arm. So. When I tried recording this last week, I went with the Corsair 4 1944, which gave me a night mission at the beginning. So I get the feeling if I go with this, I'll probably get mostly night missions. When I test flew to make sure that I corrected the issue I was having with the game that stopped me from recording it last week, which is just an issue with DX Tori, the latest version seems to have caused some sort of issue with the game. Um, when playing in DirectX mode, so I currently am playing the game in OpenGL mode, which I'm personally not a fan of. I've had issues in the past with OpenGL, but nonetheless, um, so far it's worked in OpenGL mode. So that's what we'll be flying in for the time being, because I don't feel like going and reverting back to the older version of DX Tori. So this is what I flew out when testing, because I wasn't going to bother with selecting a plane because all I was doing was testing. I'm not quite sure exactly what each one of these has. Now, the Corsair 4 I believe has cannons. Yeah. And while the Seafire L3 has cannons and machine guns, the F probably is the same. I don't think the Corsair 4 has machine guns. I think it's just cannons. And then you've got the Corsair 1 and 2 which not a hundred percent sure, but those may just have machine guns, but don't quote me on that. But you know what, I think I'll just go with the Seafire 3L since that's what we tested. I uh, will be born in London 1922, which actually, wait, let's try to do the math. That would put us at what, 20... 23? No, that's too old. 1927. That should, if my math is correct, put us at 18. Actually, no, we'll go with 19. Again, if my math is correct, that should be 19. And so, this is the only operation that we have. So, we just have to survive however long, and the Royal Navy is done completely, and we will never come back to the Royal Navy unless I were to select a different plane, which essentially means that I would have, by that time, I've basically played as every other faction, or every other nation. So let's generate our first mission and see what it is. Hopefully it's a day mission, it should be, because that's what I had when I tested, but I honestly don't know. I may have just gotten lucky. Okay, so we will be flying out from over here, or actually over here, excuse me. So our carriers are going to head south. It is 1 p.m. Um, not quite sure the time zone, but it's probably being done in uh, GMT, actually. Well, actually, no, probably not. It's probably local time, whatever. Uh, okay, let's see. So, escort mission. We're going to be escorting some Avenger Mark III's of the FAA 827th Squadron to Chuda in A9. Wow, we're flying far. Farther inland than the mission I was given when I had actually tried recording this last week. That one was somewhere over here, I believe. Uh, so, let's see. So, okay, it is the sixth day of what? June? June 6th? If my math's correct, give or take? Or, well, if I'm remembering correctly my months and whatnot. <laughs> I'm not bothering to really try to 
remember that right now. So, uh, yeah. So, let's see. Good weather. Wind at 1 km an hour at 315 degrees, which I'm presuming zero is straight north. So, the winds are going, like, northwest-ish, if I'm correct on that. Our base is going to be the HMS Illustrious. Our aircraft is the Seafire Mark III. Transit height of 16,405 feet. Escorting Avenger Mark III, so yep, okay, to AN9. Some skirmishing continues in the area around AM7, which is right here. We're going to be passing through here, so we'll probably get into a fight along the way. Uh, either on the way there or on the way back, but we'll, we'll find out which one happens. Our flight leader is going to be Lieutenant Royce Johnson. Followed by Flight Chief Petty Officer Edward Johnson. I guess those two guys are related, I'm presuming. Uh, Warrant Officer James Finucane, I guess, is going to be the person that we are the wingman of. And then us. Let's check the roster real quick. And I want to check the squadron documents. And victory conditions is for friendly forces to take Mabuni in AL-4. Once they have secured that, we win. The Japanese win once their forces have taken Townsville Airfield in AR-2, which I want to note, I don't think is actually on the map. I'm pretty sure I looked for that last time around when I tried recording this last week and it did not show up. It was not listed there. So, let's see. We have 16 uh, Seafire Mark III's in our squadron. So we could stand to lose a couple if push comes to shove. Wow. And these two guys are probably related as well. The um, commander of the 801st Squadron and the commander of the 827th Squadron. Because they are both Davids. I'm presuming they're related, but honestly, I don't know. So let's go and actually check out Johnson. He was born in Glasgow. Okay, let's check the other Johnson, our leader. He was born in York, and he actually has a medal, the defense medal. Good for him. Okay, and this is... Uh, oh, you have a medal as well, the defense medal as well. And you were also born in York. Wow, okay. So, whatever, that's going to be it for this uh, part zero. Yes, part zero. Uh, which is, again, always just the setup. And, as always, to remind you guys, the one rule that will always be the case for this series is that for the first two missions, I have a total of three lives. However, granted, I also do have the ability to go and call certain deaths complete and utter BS, or... And honestly, if I don't actually die, it's not counted as a death, because it's three deaths, not three mission fails. So, so long as I don't die... Technically speaking, it's fine, and it doesn't count against me. But if autopilot ever kills me, I'm not counting that death ever, whether it's in these first three missions or it's after, or these first two missions or after. But uh, yeah, so that's it for this one. Stay tuned in about 30 minutes or so. The actual flying out of this mission will be up. So until then, goodbye and farewell.